Hey folks, Rob here bringing you another initial rec key. This one's going to be slightly different. This is going to be an addendum, otherwise known as Hamlet's Demise Redux, where I revisit this scenario. So um, why do we need to revisit this again? Well, uh, it was over at uh, my friend Dave's place having a few beers and Hamlet's Demise came up. And uh, Dave had a couple of good suggestions, some of which I actually never even considered. And uh, I figured I would pass them on to you and... Uh, we're basically going to try and focus on the French side, see if there's anything that I now suggest that uh, might actually help the French in their um, chance of winning. Uh, so first of all is the victory conditions. Now, um, when I was setting this up, I was just thinking of the Germans killing 16 CDP of French. I didn't care about the French part. However, if you're a veteran French player, what you're thinking is that I cannot allow him to kill 16 CBP of French. Uh, I must skulk and hide. I cannot survive the kind of firepower. And as a result, when I put my weapons down, they should be in several locations that cannot be easily um, taken advantage of. Now, in my scenario playthrough, what I did was to mimic the hip capability of this gun, I picked seven different spots. However, in hindsight, um, most of these probably should not have been picked as possible suggestions. Why? Because this gun alone, if it's captured intact, is worth 4 VP. Uh, you tack on the squad, that's 6 CVP. Now this tank, the French tank, that's worth 6 as well. So right between these two units, you have um, uh, 12 points. Now that leaves 14 VP worth of French troops on the board. As long as you don't have too many captured prisoners, the French would have a better chance. So what does that mean for these 12 points here? Things that Dave suggested um, up here, for example, um, because the um, the uh, the French turret on the tank is up armored, which means uh, that sixes. Now, the only thing that can pen that really would be the 37 long because it has an AP of 9, um, which is still not a great number. And therefore, if you're in this kind of position, maybe even up in the woods here, V0, that way you can start concealed. You can get a pre-game hull down roll, so you might even be hull down. Wouldn't that be great? Um, plot one of these little bad boys here. Maybe you'll be lucky to get all three sides. Maybe you just get two or one. Whatever the point is, is that you're going to be hauled down to any kind of German fire that's going to be coming in. He's going to have to drive a tank almost point blank up to this thing to uh, help beat it. Uh, in terms of the gun, again, places like this, they tend to be isolated and uh, therefore probably not advisable. Uh, this one here, U5, I think that's a valid spot. It's back. It gives you some good cover, but again... You only have a 25 double long, which is um, not a lot of penetration power. Uh, AP to kill 25 double long is a 7. So if you're lucky enough to get within 2x range, maybe you'll get an extra plus 1 for 8. But um, unless you get a rear shot on those tanks, it's still a waste, especially when it comes to the Panzer III. Now, you could take out this thing with one armor from the front or the back. It doesn't matter. But again, the Panzer II has a three frontal armor. So um, ideally, you want to be in a position where you can either shoot him in the side or preferably in the rear shot. You get that extra plus one for that. Um, so again, the gun setting up might be better, possibly in the ground floor of the building. Once more, you've got to be in concealment terrain so you can set up in hip. So if you set it up like this, for example, and... Uh, it stays hip for as long as possible. You don't even reveal it. Um, you just keep it where it is, and the um, German has to find it. The minute this pops up, again, that's 6 CVP that he has to find. So he's going to know where your tank is because it'll be covered by a concealment. However, it is going to be hauled down to him, which means he'll be able to kill anything that comes in U1v1. Any armor that manages to live, you can then maybe unveil this, pop him in the rear. Uh, and that then then that leaves your troops. Um, again, this center thing is kind of a kill zone because you're going to get cut off quite easily, which means you're going to probably fill your route or surrender your units inside. So you want to avoid uh, setting up forward as much as possible. 
you want to sit back in these kind of areas where you force them to come to you. Maybe you can leave your LMG here. That's fine because it could sweep up the level ones. Maybe you give yourself a couple of ground troops to uh, um, help contest the uh, terrain. And maybe throw like a half squad forward just to bust up any concealment and make sure that they don't just walk into this wood building. So um, more than likely these guys will get overrun quite quickly. You'll have Germans in this wooden multi-hex building. And then they're going to be blasting you in their defensive fire phase. So you here on your turn one may want to start skulking backwards. Maybe come forward and then just, again, you're going to have to uh, play that one by ear. But depending on how the German sets up, I think setting your troops up more in a rearward position, as well as hiding your 12 CVP of gun and AFV. Um, again, that's a major part of your force. Now, if you... Um, Uh, and, and that leaves you with uh, 14 uh, troops to capture here. So again, if you can somehow limit uh, your potential for surrender, then uh, you'll have a stronger chance. And again, these two big ones, uh, this is probably what the Germans are going to be hoping for to get them because, again, they're worth so much. However, the um, uh, if you hide them in the back appropriately, then you can just deal with your screening force in front again, depending on how many prisoners they may catch. It's not a guarantee that the French would win, but it prevents this gun from setting up somewhere forward like I had it. And in this case, I had two squads come in the south. One of them managed it to S10 before it broke. They subsequently surrendered to my 228, and then I ran them off the board on the French turn. That left four points just sitting there, which this next German squad was able to come in. So the French firepower was not able to break that last squad. It ended up occupying it and possessing it, and there's four CVP just like that. Um, when this kind of thing is coupled with that earlier mistake the Germans made of moving a tank up here, and I had my 37 and P7, and it just fired right across, and it blew up the tank, no problem. Uh, that was five points that the French just picked up. But um, because I set this thing up so poorly, uh, it basically worked its way out in points. Um, so just think about that when you're a French player again. Somewhere in the back here is fine. You could even set it in W6. It just sits there concealed because it's a 25 double long. It's not going to do much. Uh, it's got no HE for versus friendly. And uh, the pan, as we said, is only a 7. So you're going to need uh, quite good rolls just to pan it in most of the German armor anyway. So uh, just hide it in the back. Maybe you can support your other tank in case they send up German armor this way. And um, you have a couple squads that can maybe fill back to help shoot up any units that come in, avoiding close combat. So just uh, just some tips in this quick little uh, addendum to uh, add, uh, augment what I passed on in my Nushiraki as well as my playthrough. So uh, hopefully you've seen that. And hopefully you watched ASL Academy's playthrough as well. And uh, it gets you a better feel for uh, how the French might be better served to set up. Again, this is all going to, um, it's not going to be an easy job for the French regardless. Even with my abysmal rolls and my stupid sacrifice of the German tank in N2, it still ended up being uh, 18 for the German and 19 CVP for the French. So all they had to do was shoot one half squad or capture one half squad and it would have been a game over. So hopefully that's been of some use. Uh, I'm going to link the initial recce and my playthrough at the end of the video. And we'll see you guys in the next one.